Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Today we've got a brand new story to share with you. So let's begin. I caught my wife, Cass, getting married in 2018. We met a few years before that through business because we are in the same industry. I love her more than everything. The reason I married her was because I had major turmoil in my life and she stuck with me. We had a small break before we got back together. When we started talking again, I found out my father was indicted in a cold case murder. He was going to jail. The terrible part is that my father had custody of my nephew L for months. At this time, I was the only family member able to take him on because my brother was currently in jail. Through this, she said we would do this together. I knew I wanted to marry her right then. My wife was told she was more than likely not going to be able to have kids, but I wanted to marry her anyway because of how much I loved her. I always wanted to be a dad but was willing to sacrifice that because of how much I loved her. During this terrible time, I wanted something solid. We were best friends and have made it through so much. I felt like we could tackle the world together. I asked her to marry me on a weekend, and then we found out she was miraculously pregnant the following week. We went from talking again to a family in no time. Looking back, I wanted to have a long engagement to make sure we worked through any issues from our break but instead we were thrown right in. We were married in 2018, and everything was great. I loved her very much, and our marriage wasn't perfect, but I was loyal to her, and she was my ride or die. Fast forward to 2021. We moved states because I had to take a new job because our business was derailed by COVID. This new job required me to travel a lot, and she wanted to be close to her family for help with our three kids. We had two beautiful girls on top of my nephew. Cass quit her last job and worked locally with her family. She hated being home because her family was full of constant judgment and asking. When help was needed from them, it was like pulling teeth. It honestly pulled us down and reminded her why she left the first time. Her old employer asked for her back. But this job was four hours away, and without really discussing it extensively like a couple should, it required her to be gone during the week. She was going to work this into a remote position, but as she started the job, she started to like being away. She left me to take care of the kids and I love them, but it was hard. I felt abandoned. I still traveled two days a week and had to rely on and deal with her family. Not to mention all of the duties of taking care of three kids. She would come home on weekends and it would be fight after fight. I wanted and needed help, but when she came home, she would hardly want to hang out with us but instead go out with her brother and friends. All I wanted was help. The business we are in is primarily male. She started being distant, and we were hardly sexual anymore. Last summer, we moved to where she was working. Her time there changed her. She is a beautiful, tall blonde and is constantly getting hit on by her male co-workers and customers. She had a co-worker named Seth, 33, whom I knew from being in the same industry. I liked him. I never felt threatened by him because all my dealings with him have been good. He put out there that he was a moral man as far as I could tell. I did not feel threatened, for he was not Cass's type. After we moved, I tried everything I could to make Cass happy. Listening, emotionally supportive, and complimenting, I bared any household task to try to make an effort to not prevail. What I did was never good enough. We finally got to a point where we both agreed that therapy was our best option. We agreed on individual therapy first. She found an online therapist, which I thought wasn't the best, but it was what she wanted to do. One day she asked what my plans were for later in the week. I told her I didn't have to travel and would be working from home. She asked if I could work at a coffee shop that day because she wanted space. She wanted to work home that day and had a therapy session. I said sure. We have always shared our location for safety. A few times in recent weeks, her location would randomly turn off. She said it was an issue with her phone. The day she had her session in the afternoon, she made sure my location was working and called me to make sure. I felt it was suspicious. I asked her if everything was okay, and she said yes. I turned off my location, and 15 minutes before her session, she asked why it wasn't working. I told her my phone must have the same issues as hers. She asked if I was still in the coffee shop and I said yes. She said I could come back in two hours. My spider sense went off. 
I left the coffee shop as I could see her location was not at the house. I drove back and parked down the street. Five minutes later, I saw Seth and Cass both get out and walk into the house. It was obvious that she wasn't going to therapy. I waited for ten minutes as my heart was beating uncontrollably and the thought of what I would find in there and how it would ruin me. But I had to know. I walked in, and no one was in the living room. There is no reason a man that Cass works with should be in any other room. I made it to our bedroom and opened the door to find them both about to do the deed. He was but naked on my bed, with her almost there. I looked at her and yelled, Is this a new type of therapy? Both of them had utter shock in their faces. She ran after me, trying to say it wasn't what it looked like. I broke down. I didn't cry, but my body and mind took over, and my world was turned upside down. Seth exited as quick as he could as Cass made sure she was between us. I tried to leave, but Cass was physically blocking me. I'm traditional in the sense that I would never physically hurt a woman. But a relentless version of Cass came out. All I wanted to do was leave. I was a former defensive lineman and used my old moves to evade her without having to get physical. Once I got to my car, she blocked me from leaving. In order to leave, I had to trick her into thinking I wanted to talk, but I sprinted to the car and took off. I think she broke a nail trying to grab the door handle as I was speeding away. I'm flushed with anxiety. I don't understand how she could have done this. All I did was try to make her happy. The picture of that man naked on my bed is haunting me after he tries so hard to come off as a good man. I still have to process this. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more stories like this. See you next time.